Hey kids, it's me, Teacher A. Um, so this is the second part of our week five lecture video. Okay, so last time we discussed um, the first case where the payment period is not the same as the interest conversion period. And then we already discussed the two methods that we can use to solve if we are dealing those kind of annuities where the payment period is not the same as the interest conversion period. The first method is you convert the interest conversion period as the same frequency as the payment period, right? And then the second approach or the second method, um, you are going or we are going to develop expressions in terms of actuarial symbols to get the present value or the accumulated value of an annuity. Okay, so in, in the second method, we don't have to convert interest rates. Okay, so it's up to you kung alin ang gagamitin ninyo. Okay, and then last time, we also derived um, actuarial symbols in getting the accumulated values and present values of annuity immediate, annuity due, perpetuity immediate, and perpetuity due for the case where the payment period is less than the interest conversion period or um, annuities payable less frequently than interest is convertible. Okay, so now we're going to continue our discussion. We're now going to have the case where the payment period is now greater than the interest conversion period or simply annuities payable more frequently than interest is convertible. Okay, again, you can apply the first approach here. What is that again? Converting the interest rates, okay? That's the same frequency as the payment period. All right? Okay, let's start. Okay. So, let's derive formulas where PP is greater than ICP. So, let's define some variables here. M, this time, this is the number of payment periods in one ICP. All right? And then, we recall N, that's the term of annuity measured in ICP. So, itong N, madali lang itong maalala, right? Kasi you always remember, yung N, yun yung gaano kahaba yung annuity ninyo, and it is measured in terms of ICP always, interest conversion period always. Mamaya, you will see in our examples that all the timelines will be written in terms of interest conversion period. Okay? So, madali matandaan yung N. Kasi yung N dito, same as N doon sa case where PP is less than ICP. Paro silang term of annuity measured in ICP. Okay? Alright. And then, let I be the effective rate of interest per interest conversion period. I used I here. Not J, but you can use J also. Okay? I used I here because um, ayoko ko yung malito mamaya kasi parang may conversion of interest na mangyayari dito. Okay? Parang ang press release nitong um, derivation natin ng formula is to avoid conversion of interest. But, you know, to use that formula that we are going to derive, kailangan nyo rin talaga mag-convert ng interest. You'll see later. All right? Now I have a question. Given these variables, ilan kaya ang total number of payments? What is the total number of annuity payments? So it's very easy, right? Because we know that N, we have N interest conversion period. Okay, that's the length of our annuity. Okay, and for each ICP, there are M 
payment periods. So what is the total number of payment periods? That is the product of M and N. That's the total number of annuity payments. Okay, let me show you the timeline for this case where PP is greater than ICP. Here it is. Again, let's consider an annuity immediate. Okay, payments are made at the end of each period. Okay, as you can see, we have N interest conversion periods, right? This is the first interest conversion period, right, up to here. And then this is the second interest conversion period. And I have no enough space here to write the nth ICP, pero end to siya. Okay? Okay, and then per one ICP, it is subdivided into M. Okay? Subdivisions. Kasi doon mangyayari ang payments. Okay? Kaya nga nakalagay dito, M, there are M payment periods in one interest conversion period. I divided it into M subdivisions. Okay? Now, you may ask, um, bakit 1 over M ang amount of payments? Okay? I will show you later the reason behind bakit ginamit natin 1 over M ang amount ng payments. Okay? This is to be able to get a very nice actuarial symbol. Okay? Okay. So for now, given this timeline, we're going to get its present value. Now, how are we going to do that? We're, oh, we're going to carry all the amounts to time zero. So for example, this is 1 over M, the first payment. How do you carry it to time zero? You multiply it by V raised to 1 over M. Okay? For the second payment, you'll have 1 over M times V to the 2M. Kasi 2 subdivisions na dinaanan niya. And so on. Okay? So at equal 0, the present value looks like ito. This is the present value of the first set of payments. What do I mean by first set? Dun sa unang interest conversion period. Okay? Yan yung unang set of payments. Doon sa unang interest conversion period. Now, this is the present value of the second set of payments. So, this is for the second interest conversion period. And then lastly, ito yung nasa last or nasa nth ICP. That's the last set of payments. Okay? So, please verify each term. Okay? Kung tama ang mga exponents. I think so naman. All right. Okay. If you notice, 1 over M is a common factor, right? So you can put that out. You can factor that out, the 1 over M. And then after that, notice also that you form a geometric series, right? Okay. What is the first term in our geometric series? The first term is V. Raised to 1 over M. Kasi we, all, we already factored out the 1 over M. So the first term is V to the 1 over M. So what about the common ratio? The common ratio is V raised to 1 over M. Alright? And what is the total number of terms here? So it's like, it's the same question as, um, what is the total number of payments? You have M times N. All right? So applying the geometric series formulas, you'll have this one. Okay? So this is the common factor that we factored out. This is the first term. 1 minus, this is the common ratio times the number of terms all over 1 minus R. All right? And then you simplify. 
can cancel m here. Okay. So we'll have 1 minus v to the n. And then you try to write v to the 1 over m here. Okay. Well, ginawa na naman natin ito dun sa mga previous derivations natin. Okay. So hindi ko na ulit uulitin. All right. So doing that, simplifying further, you're going to have this expression. Okay? Tapos tingnan nyo yung denominator. Okay? Okay, tingnan nyo muna. And then, you recall um, the relationship of these interest rates. 1 plus i equals... 1 plus i upper m over m raised to m. Do you recall that? Okay. You can manipulate that identity and then you're going to have this expression. And this expression is equal to i upper m. So that's why you'll have 1 minus v to the n all over this whole thing is equal to i upper m. And that is exactly our A angle N upper M. How do we interpret this in words? This is the present value. Yeah, present value. Yeah, this is the present value of an annuity immediate. Yeah, where payments of 1 over M are made at the end of each Mth. Of a period. Okay? For N periods. Okay? So the payment amount is equal to 1 over M. Oh, take note, walang 1 over M dito. Okay? Hindi 1 over M ang coefficient ni A angle N upper M. Okay? So, bakit? So, ano coefficient? It's 1, right? Paano naging 1? Okay. So, ganito ang gagawin nyo when you're dealing with this case where PP is greater than ICP. Okay. Let us go back to the timeline. Okay. So, here is the timeline again for A angle N upper M. So, bakit nga ba 1 ang coefficient ni A angle N upper M? So you remember when, when you have this case, PP is greater than ICP, okay? Even if the amount of payment is 1 over M, hindi ito ang magiging coefficient ng inyong A angle N upper M. Baano ba naging 1? Ang ginawa lang, you add all the payments made in 1 ICP. And if you add this, you'll get 1. Even for the second ICP, if you add all the payments, you'll get 1. Alright? So, ganun maghanap ng coefficient ng inyong A angle N, upper M. Okay? You'll see an example later. Alright? Okay, so I will not derive the formulas for the accumulated value of this annuity immediate. Kasi dapat ngayon expert na talaga kayo na mag-relate ng mga annuities. Like, in this example, you have the present value of an annuity immediate. How do you get the accumulated value of this annuity immediate? What do you do? You simply multiply this by 1 plus i raised to n. Right? And you will get s angle n upper m. Okay? Don't worry, there will be a summary of formulas at the end of the lecture. All right? So, let's have these examples. Okay? This is a basic example. This is just to demonstrate how to deal with these problems using approach to the second method. Okay? Of course, you can verify the numerical values here. Okay? By using method 1. Okay? Pwede nyong i-check. Okay? Or i-recompute yung example na ito using method 1. Kasi ang gagamitin natin dito is the second method. Okay? 
So we're going to get the present value of payments of 10 at the end of each quarter for five years, given these interest rates. First one, you have I upper 4 equals 10%. What do you notice? Payment period is the same as the interest conversion period. Pareho silang quarterly, right? Okay, so this should be easy. Okay, the second interest rate, I upper 12. I upper 12 is equal to 10%. So I think this is the case where payment period is less than the interest conversion period, right? Okay, what about the third interest rate? We're, we're given I equals 10%. So this is the case where PP is greater than ICP, okay? So let's have... A timeline for this problem. Yeah? So I think ngayon, at this point, confident na dapat kayo gumawa ng time diagrams. Okay? So this is the timeline for the problem. Okay? But I'm going to relabel the timeline, okay, per problem. Okay? Pero makikita ninyo sa pag-relabel ko ng timeline, it is always based on the number of interest conversion period. Lagi yung tatandaan, yung term of annuity, okay, kung gaano kahaba ang annuity, yung N natin, okay, that's the number of ICPs. Okay? Okay. Ganun siya natin ililabel, yung time diagram. Okay, let's have the first question. Ano yung first question? Um, the payment period is quarterly and the interest conversion is also quarterly. So the same. So that's our original timeline. And tingnan nyo, how do I relabel the timeline? Like that. So you see, how do I relabel the timeline? I relabel the timeline based on the number of quarters. Okay. So we know that, we all know that there are 20 quarters in five years. And payments are made at the end of each quarter. So here, the first payment of 10, this one is made at the end of the first quarter. Ito, end of second quarter. And then the last payments of 10, this is made at the end of the 20th quarter. So you see... Kapag equal ang payment period at interest conversion period, you just use the basic annuity. Okay? Alright. So, what is the present value of this annuity? Now, let me recall the problem. Okay? So, yan lang din yun kanina. Nire-write ko lang. Okay? This is the case where PP is equal to ICP. So, ano nga ba ang present value nito? It's very easy, right? So, with J... As the effective rate of interest per quarter, so that is 10% divided by 4, so that's 2.5%. So using J, what is the present value of this annuity? It is simply 10 times A angle 20, right? Okay, and then you use your calculator to get the value. Ito yung value niyan. Okay? All right, so I think we can now move on to question number two. Okay, so this is question number two. So, wala pa rin pagbabago sa payment period. There are payments of 10 at the end of each quarter for five years. Okay, but this time, we're given I upper 12. Okay, so it's very clear that we have the case PP is less than ICP. Okay, so take a look at this. Consider this timeline. What do you notice? How do I relabel the time diagram? 
I relabel it in terms of interest conversion period. So meaning in terms of months. So parang ilang months in five years. So we have five times 12, it's 60 months. Okay? At kailan nangyayari ang first, I mean, kailan nangyayari ang payments? Every quarter. So we know that there are three months in one quarter. So that's why, ayan ang label nung timeline natin. Multiples of three. All right? Okay? So now, we get its present value. Okay? Without converting the interest rate. Pero para nga ninyo ma-check yung values, you may want to convert this I upper 12. You get the equivalent I upper 4. And then, you can use the basic annuity formula. Okay? Pero ito, we don't use approach 1. We make use of the second method. Okay? Sige nga. Let's, let us recall, what is K? K is the number of ICP, yeah, number of ICPs in one payment period. So, ito yung one payment period. How many ICPs? How many months? Three. Okay? What about N? Ito, wag yung kalilimutan. N is the term of annuity measured in? terms of ICP. So, parang gaano kadaming months sa limang taon. So, we have 5 times 12 kanina, it's 60. Okay. And then, what is our J? That's the effective rate of interest. We don't convert. We make use of 10% here. Pero this one is nominal rate. What is the effective rate? We divide this by 12. Okay, that's why we have 0.10 divided by 12. All right, let's now get the present value. Okay, so if you recall, what is the formula? It is A angle N over S angle K. And then we have to multiply it by the amount of payment. So the, the amount of payment here is uh, 10. Okay, so that's why we have this. Okay, you do the, I mean, you do the calculation, use your calculator. Dapat alam na alam nyo nang gamitin yung calculator ninyo. Okay, you'll be getting this amount. Okay, all right. Let's move on to the last question. This is the last question. This is the case where the payment period is greater than the interest conversion period. Okay? This is annuities payable more frequently than interest is convertible. Okay? Okay. So what do we have? So as you can see, look at the timeline. I labeled the timeline based on ICP. What is our interest conversion period? Per year. Okay, that's why we only have five years here. Yeah? Okay. So let's try to find its present value. Of course, I is equal to 10%. Okay, and N, or oh, N, Gaano ka habang annuity in terms of ICP? So, parang ilang years meron? So, five. Tapos, how many payments in one year? Four. So, that's why for the present value, we have what? A, angle five, because that's out the value of N, upper four. Okay, my question is, ano ang coefficient ni A angle 5 upper 4? Mali kapag 10, right? Okay, kasi sabi kanina, di ba kanina 1 over M? 
we don't use 1 over m as the coefficient of our a angle n upper m. Ano yung ginamit natin coefficient? The sum of all the 1 over m's in one interest conversion period. So here, this is one interest conversion period. Diba? You get the sum of all the payments and you get 40. So that's why that is the coefficient of your a angle 5 upper 4. Okay? You calculate the value using your friendly calculator and you will get this one. Okay? Okay, so before we end this lecture video, let's have a summary of formulas. Okay? Ito yung formulas where PP is less than ICP. Okay? Alam nyo, pwedeng ito lang yung i-memorize ninyo. The formula in getting the present value of an annuity immediate. Yeah? Because if you know A angle N over S angle K, you multiply it by 1 plus J raised to N, you will get the accumulated value. Okay? It's S angle N over S angle K. Now, how do you get the present value of an annuity due from an annuity immediate formula. Diba? You recall, okay, sige, let's recall the timeline of this annuity immediate for the case PP less than ICP. Okay, so this is the time diagram for um, annuity immediate where PP is less than ICP. Nandito yung A angle N over S angle K. Right? Okay. To make it an annuity due, you always recall yung present value ng annuity due nangyayari kung nasaan yung first payment. Okay? So, nasaan ba yung first payment? Dito. Okay, so kung nandito kayo, your A angle N over S angle K, how do you carry it to time K? You multiply A angle N over S angle K by 1 plus J raised to K. Right? And then you try to write 1 plus J raised to K in the denominator. And then you're going to have this. Yeah, you imagine A angle N over S angle K, multiply it by 1 plus J raised to K. And then I'm going to put 1 plus J raised to K here. So parang magiging V to the K na siya. Dito. So V to the K times S angle K, that will become A angle K. See? Very easy. And then from here, how do you get the accumulated value? You multiply it by 1 plus J raised to N. Kasi you're going to carry it at the end of the period. So it becomes S angle N over A angle K. See? And then for a perpetuity immediate, how do you do that? You just get the limit of an annuity immediate as N approaches infinity. And you will get this one. Okay? Okay? Same with perpetuity due. Okay? You just get the limit of the annuity due formula as n approaches infinity. And you will get 1 over i a angle k. Alright? And we all know that it's not applicable or in getting accumulated value is not applicable here. Okay? Okay. This is the second set of formulas. This is the case where PP is greater than ICP or annuities payable more frequently than interest is convertible. Okay? We only derive this um, formula, the present value of an annuity immediate. And we have A angle N, upper M. Diba? Ito yung nakuha nating formula. And to get the accumulated value, again, you multiply it by 1 plus i raised to n. That's why we have this. Okay? Tapos ito, hindi nyo naman kailangan ng i-derive. 
Okay, tingnan nyo lang ang difference. Okay, instead of having I upper M in the denominator, you are going to have D upper M now for an annuity due. And take note of the symbol. It's A double dot angle N upper M. All right? Okay, ganun din naman ang accumulated value. You just replace this I upper M by D upper M. Okay, and the notation is S double dot angle N upper M. Okay? And lastly, these are the formulas for perpetuities. You just let N approach infinity and you will get this expression. Okay, I think that's it. Okay, study well, kids. See you in my next video.